I, I think to be in front of a real wild animal, it can be an, an overpowering experience. Your blood rushes, your heart beats, and you fumble with the buttons, and eventually you're able to catch a breath, and then you're able to start making decisions about how you want to portray this creature. When you know that things have happened in a certain way, the light is there, the timing is there, the animal is looking, you got an eye shine, uh, you, you feel it in your heart, you do. It is really glorious to see some of the creatures that God has given us on this world. The beauty, the diversity. Life is stunning. When we are inspired by the beauty of God's diversity, the rhythm of the bird's call, by the coordination of the schools of fish, we are called to worship. It's a remarkable world. There are as many as 12 million species of organisms in the world. Each one is unique with its own unique genetics, set of habits, its own unique place in functioning ecosystems. And they infuse our life with a sense of beauty and wonder that nurtures us with every passing day. The Jewish tradition tells us that animals teach us that we look at animals and we learn varieties of moral lessons from their particular behavior. Finding some of the species that are most in danger and they're the most rare around our planet is not an easy task. The reason I do it is because photography is a critically important tool to help people understand what's at stake here. We live in a world where many species are already threatened with extinction because of changes that have happened in their habitats, changes in land use, threats that have been introduced to their ecosystems. Climate change adds a whole other dimension of threats to many different species of wildlife. People have tended to think about climate change in terms of melting glaciers or sea level rise or something like that, and not really understand that species themselves are, real, are affected all over the globe. We know that climate change stands to have very dramatic impacts on life on our planet, on our global biodiversity. The International Panel on Climate Change has estimated that as many as a third of all the species in the world may be in danger of extinction during this century as a result of global warming alone. Species go extinct uh, as a natural course of events, but human beings have accelerated that rate to 10 and 100 and even a thousand times natural background extinction rates. Stop for a second and think what would happen to us were any other natural rate multiplied by 1,000 times. Imagine that rainfall was a thousand times heavier than it currently is, or that we had a thousand times more volcanoes exploding than we currently do, or rates of disease transmission, or any other natural rate. This is a level of, of gravity that we're talking about when we discuss the extinction crisis. Without other organisms, we can't be alive. The oxygen we breathe comes from plants on land. It comes from plants in the ocean, phytoplankton. Without pollinators, bees and moths and birds and other organisms, about half our crops would not be possible. Without predators, foxes and hawks and snakes, we would have overpopulations of rodents, that some of which carry disease. So we are dependent totally on the rest of the natural world. Of the many impacts that humanity has on our planet, most are reversible. We can restore habitats, we can clear up pollution. What we can't do is put back a species once it's become extinct. Species extinction is irreversible, species are irreplaceable. Species are fundamental to our existence. One can begin removing them. They can become extinct in forests, in prairies, in freshwater, in other places. But an analogy has been made to pulling rivets out of an airplane. You know, you could pull out a lot of rivets and it hasn't really made any difference. But when you get to a certain point, the airplane simply falls apart. Every one of those species in natural systems is related to other species in the flow of energy through the systems in all kinds of relationships that we often perceive only dimly. But a healthy environment, one that absorbs pollutants, provides fresh water for us, conserves the soil, 
provides insects that pollinate our apple trees and our other crops. A healthy environment depends on the interactions between many species and letting individual parts go is something that we can do only at our peril because those are the parts that make up the functional systems. The creation is much like a great symphony or a symphony of symphonies. It is a marvelous system for sustaining life and to sustain human culture as well. We are impacting this system, there's no doubt about it, and we're impacting it adversely. As it warms, a great many of the species in the world will become extinct simply because their habitats cease to exist. We have the ability to ameliorate that, to tone it down, to help to turn it off if we're willing to do so. This issue is a cosmological question. The fate of the planet is at stake and of God's creatures and that's why we have to care and why we have to love. We have a daunting challenge in front of us, but We've had very daunting challenges in the past, and we've always risen to the occasion. One of the things that's exciting about the coalition that's coming together to talk about what we need to do to stop climate change and why it matters both to humans and to wildlife is that that's an interesting and wonderful coalition of people from many different walks of life. What gives me hope is when I see art and faith and science and, and, and conservation voices all come together. But one of the most exciting things is, I work on a lot of college campuses, and I'm seeing young people really rise up and embrace this challenge. One of the most remarkable things of my life in the last few years is working very closely with evangelical Christian leaders. They are becoming some of the most active and important players in looking at environmental changes and trying to help solve it in their own churches, in Christian colleges, and that gives me enormous hope. The animals have their inherent value beyond what they do to serve us, and I think the religious traditions have to teach that, and they are part of God's given presence on Earth. I think many people also find wildlife important just as a sense of beauty. All of us care about these many different creatures on the Earth in different ways, but we all have a passion for them. People understand what steps they can take in their own households and through their churches and communities. And, and then in the national political realm. There's still a lot of my colleagues here in Washington who either don't get it or pretend not to get it, and we really need to kind of push over that tipping point to where people see the onslaught of global warming, understand the costs that it will impose on our children and our grandchildren, uh, and are prepared to do something to protect the species and the habitat and the environment of this world. The thing that citizens can do is to get active. Go to the website of this project. It has action steps on it, contacting members of Congress to support legislative activity that would protect habitat and that would slow down climate change, but also in local communities. There are local groups everywhere to plug into. There are not going to be any miracles, scientific breakthroughs, or ways to avoid the problems that we're facing. There are plenty of things, on the other hand, that we can do individually. And if we're prepared to do that, then there are plenty of reasons to be optimistic about the future. At the end of the day, it all depends on us. To slow down the pace of climate change, to give us enough time to create the new technologies so that we can live in a different way. I think we do have those opportunities and it's time to take them. The reason I get up in the morning and do this every day is because I'd love for my own children to have some of the experiences that I've enjoyed throughout my career as a photographer. I really, really would like for them to have that intimate look at nature. Be aware of what you are feeling as you watch the majesty of these animals. Be aware of the gift that you are given by being in the presence of this diversity of nature, the surprising aspects of nature. Imagine how impoverished others will be if they never get to see this. What is your role in making sure that those species and those animals never vanish from the face of the earth?